object attributes are how you define what data is stored about a particular object type in Insight. In this video, I'll show you how to create attributes, the different options there are, and how they define your objects. We're back in our IT employee assets object schema, but I've added even more object types and I've even added some objects, as we can see the numbers of objects in the brackets here. If I go to the laptop object type and create a laptop object here now, we can see it only asks us for a name, which isn't very useful for defining our laptops. To expand this, we can set more attributes for the laptop object type. I'll click attributes here and we can see four attributes are already in place. Key, name, created and updated are the only mandatory assets. All of them except name are updated automatically. Because there is a separate key attribute, we don't actually need to have a unique name for each object if you don't want to. We can create new attributes by going to the bottom of this list and typing in a name, in this case, serial number. I'll leave the attribute type as default, and then here we can see different data types that we could select. We have text, numerics, dates, URLs, selects, and more. For serial number, I'll choose text. Next, I want an attribute to define the owner of my laptop. I'm going to choose the attribute type user, which will then let me select a Jira user as the owner of a particular laptop. I also want to track the asset lifecycle status of my laptops. So I'll choose the attribute type status. Here I can select some predefined statuses such as ordered, in stock, in use, broken and retired. Finally, I also want to know the location of my laptops. Because location is relevant for my laptops, but also my monitors and potentially other assets I might have, I've made location its own object type. This lets me manage my different locations easily from the location object type. If I click on the location object type, we can see I've already added a few locations. I'll go back to my laptop object type and its attributes and I will add a new attribute called location. Here I will select the attribute type object. These object attribute types let me reference another object to show some kind of dependency. In this case, I will link the laptop to a location. I also want to select the type of link I'm creating here from this list of reference types. In this case, I will select location. I can add as many attributes as I like, and I can also click the cog here to edit some of the settings for an attribute. One option is allowing us to set multiple values for an attribute. Now for a laptop, it's not useful to have more than one owner. For a server or a business application, there may well be multiple owners. If I go back to my object view and create a laptop object, here we can see we now need to enter more information. I'll give it a serial number, select an owner, set the status as in use, and select the location as Amsterdam. I'll go ahead and create this object and now we can see it in our object schema. As a final note on the object references and statuses, I can define these by going to object schema and configure. On the references tab is where we define what types of links we can have between objects in this schema. In the statuses tab, we can set the different types of statuses for our objects. All of these references and statuses will then be accessible from all our object types in this schema. You can also set statuses and references on a global level by going to the Insight configuration settings. That's it for this introduction to object attributes. Next, we will take a look at how to import objects into Insight.